How's it going folks? It's Rob here. Had a couple of long-time subscribers and mates ask if I could do an update on the aquaponic system. So here you go folks. For you people who are new to our channel and only you know newly subscribed, you can check out a little card up there. That'll take you to a playlist of how this system's evolved over the last four or five years. So you can check that out after you've watched this one if you want or whenever. Um, but yeah, we'll have a bit of a walk through here and show you what's going on. Just quickly, we're coming into our cooler months, so we've taken the old shade cover off and we're sort of um, trying to clean out some of the beds, so that's what we'll pretty much we'll look at today. So what we might do is we might take a bit of a wander up to the back stairs and I'll give you an aerial shot of the system. So here's a bird's eye view of the system as it stands today. Um, as you can see, we now have a lighter grade shade cloth. It's actually an insect netting uh, over the top. The reason we've put that up there is pretty much all because of this tree above it. It's a butterfly leaf tree. Uh, it's just dropping a whole heap of leaves on there and we need to keep them out of the grow beds and whatnot and also the fish tanks. Um, there was quite a few leaves built up on the shade cloth we had on there previously. We had a double layer of the 90% shade cloth over the fish tank area and a 50% over the rest of the grow beds mainly just to knock out some of the heat from the summer sun we get here. So being in the subtropics, it does get rather hot and that clay doesn't take long for it to heat up in the grow beds. So just to give you some idea, this is a shot of the grow beds yesterday morning. Uh, the turmeric in particular, you can see how much shade was generated by that 50% shade cloth. It was cutting out a lot of the sunlight and these leafy greens that are planted below really do need it. Also over the back, the turmeric itself was shading out the jalapeno. So definitely, yeah, looking at harvesting that uh, turmeric today so we can open up some bed space down the back. So I thought I'd just give you that little quick look. Um, Taking off the shade cloth is really easy. Uh, the three of us, I think it took around about 40 minutes all up just to sort out the shade cloth to go on there. Uh, take the old stuff off and put this new stuff on. Some of this veggie net is up to five years old now and it is deteriorating in parts. So it looks like I might have to replace it at the end of this season, if not sooner. Um, I also have the, the uh, hoop house that covers the soil beds down the back. It needs to have the 50% taken off of that and the um, lighter insect netting put over the top to keep the cabbage butterflies out during winter. Anyway, we'll pop down to the system itself and have a bit of a gander at what's going on. So these are the fish tanks and as you can see the side walls are pretty much all getting direct sunlight now so that'll hopefully help to keep the water a little bit warmer. Um, I was hoping to have a compost hot water system um, set up just over there in my little round cage but unfortunately I just don't have the material at the moment to make one up so um, just over here is the radial flow filter, the bio filter and our first little sump tank hidden behind the ginger there. Um, just to give you an idea at the moment today I checked the pH this morning um, it needs to be dosed up but it was 6.3 or 6.31 on the pH and the temperature at the moment is 18.4 degrees Celsius so it is a little bit chilly for these jade perch at the moment. Um, the jade perch are just in that far tank over there and the silver perch are in this one just directly in front of the camera so this time of year the jade perch I cut their feed down a fair bit I was planning on having most of the jade perch out by now but it just hasn't happened um, as soon as they are harvested though half of the silvers in this tank here which is just over 50 uh, will be moving into here and we'll just run the system on 50 silver perch for the time being and then at a later date we'll repopulate with some jade perch so Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the fish are going. Um, I'll throw a couple of bits of feed in and we'll see if we can get the um, fish up to the surface. I don't think the jade perch will come up, but what we'll do is we'll toss a bit of food into the silvers and see if they come up to say good day. These jades are waiting for the feed to go over the back. Sneaky little buggers. There we go. So they are feeding and the silvers have started to feed behind me here. So it's just one of those things with the cooler weather, these guys just really, you know, they do slow down their feeding rates a bit. The silver perch though, they should pretty much will stay on the food. I think it's just because I'm standing over the tank, they're a little bit shy at the moment. But anyway, it won't take long for all that to go. So just onto the grow beds, this one with the ginger is still going gangbusters. Uh, the ginger is starting to die off though, now it's a little bit cooler. You can see the brown tips on the leaves. Uh, the Thai basil down the base there is going really well. There's another one around the other corner, but I trimmed him back the other week for access reasons. 
and down the front here we've pulled a couple of the beets. So there are a few other veggies in there. There's a celery that's hidden underneath the, um, the ginger. It hasn't done too well, mainly because of the lack of sunlight, I think. Uh, in the following week or so, I'm gonna harvest this ginger. So we might pop a clip up on that just to show you what sort of a yield we got. So here's a look at the uh, bed from another angle. You can see the celery down in there, nipped off a couple of stalks, added them diced up finely to salads and whatnot. Down in there we have the perennial spinach. Uh, some of that came out last night with um, some from this bed over here and went into a rather tasty, um, what was it, ricotta and spinach stuffed chicken breast. Thank you very much, Bianca. Very tasty. Uh, this one here is actually a chard. It's not a true spinach. And it's, yeah, it's grown for a couple of months now. Looks like the grasshoppers are still enjoying it as well. Should nip him off and give him to the fish. Uh, the Thai basil, as I said before, I've cut it back a fair bit. It was just um, stopping access through to the sump tank. There's no bees around this morning, but I've left as many flower spikes as I can. Oh, actually, there's one over the back there. Um, yeah, just need to give the bees something to um, forage on, I figure. Down in here, the rest of this bed, I've cleaned out a lot of what was over the back there a couple of weeks back. It was just getting overgrown with mushroom herb and also the longevity spinach. I've pulled out all the longevity spinach from this system and I've got a little bit growing in a um, root pouch down the back. I just, the girls aren't too keen on it. We much prefer the um, Okinawan spinach that's growing in the far bed. So thank you very much, Ben, for sharing it with us. We are keeping some growing here just so we can share with other locals who are interested in trying it out. Got to pass on the love. Uh, here we have a parsley. Um, this is a bit of a miracle parsley. It grew all through summer without going to seed. I noticed a seed head forming on it um, yesterday. I knocked him off and we added him in with the last night's dinner as well. Uh, hopefully this will keep us in parsley for a little while longer. We'll just nip down to the other bed. Down in this bed here, we did have a large Okinawan spinach. The stump is still in there. I like to leave them in there so they don't disturb the roots of other plants. Um, I chopped him back. He was taking up a lot of um, real estate here, just shading out the plants behind it. We got some Chinese cabbage or wombok in there and um, six or seven garlic as well. So I needed to take him out. I also harvested the seeds so we can share the love with a couple of local people interested in trying it. So not something you, you know, plan out this time of year coming into the cooler months. But yeah, as soon as spring hits or the end of winter and it starts to warm up here, we can sow some out. Uh, down the bottom here, I lost my thyme. Um, the Okinawan spinach shaded out this whole area. And my old thyme died. It was hanging down here like a big beard. So I've popped in another little seedling. So hopefully he'll take off and do just as well. We've still got um, basil. This basil's over 12 months old now. Uh, it's the sweet variety. Um, over the back there, there is another one. It smells a little bit more aniseedy. We bought it as a sweet basil, but I think whoever um, started the seeds pretty much all um, stuffed up there because it's definitely not as sweet basil as we'd know it. Uh, around the back here, we have the turmeric. Um, that's what's going to be harvested in a little while. Down the base here, we have some very noisy plovers flying over, but we also have some scallions or green onions. Bianca popped them in the other day, um, just bought them on markdown discount. So just chopped off the tops and sewed them straight in there or planted them straight in there. Just behind the turmeric in the bed over the top of the sump tank, as you can see, it's fairly shaded at the moment. Uh, some of that is due to the turmeric leaves, um, just up the top there, growing over the other bed, shading it out, but also to the Okinawan spinach there. So what I plan on doing is having a very big salad tonight um, and using some of that Okinawan spinach, or we might have a stir fry or something, and use that in there. And I want to plant out this bed this morning with some, uh, just some small leafy greens. We bought some mixed lettuce. We'll plant them out in there. Uh, over the back there, we also have some Brazilian spinach, it's doing rather well. Um, the chili, chili's still going, uh, the jalapeno, it's getting, every now and then we're getting um, fly strike on a few of them, but they're pretty much all slowed right down. Just beside this bed here, we have the yellow barrels. These barrels here, uh, they're a bit of a flop in this area, mainly because it was too shaded with the mango above them, and also to the other plants here, the turmeric and whatnot, as you can see, um, it was shaded right out. So the taro we had in there did fair to average. I've dug out all the corms that were left and we're gonna store them and try and plant them out somewhere else next year. We did harvest a couple of small ones from this barrel here and we had them as chips alongside some jade perch we pulled from the system. So I'm really looking forward to letting them grow a bit larger next season and preparing them in a few different 
different ways. These barrels are pretty much all turned off at the moment. I've um, undone the coupling that connects them to the system and they're just sitting there ready for me to renovate them. I'm thinking about uh, turning this one around into the centre here and putting an external bell siphon on them, just playing around with them. And then next year, because of the shady location, we might pop in a ginger and a turmeric into these guys here just to keep them out of the way, but keep them flood and drain. Um, just after seeing how well the ginger way over there is done um, this season with the flood and drain beds a lot better than the dutch bucket style last year i think yeah it might be the way to grow these guys in the system and yeah because they do grow out and take up a bit of room i figured up the back would be the best spot so there we go there's a bit of a roundup on how the system's going so I decided to harvest the turmeric and you can check it out in that clip up there. If I kept it in this one, it'd just get too long winded. So um, yeah, I gave it a clip all by itself. What we will do though, is I'll take you over and I'll show you how I'm planning out the um, lettuce, rainbow chard and the parsley. Uh, it's pretty easy to do in aquaponics. So here we go. So this is the bed over the top of the sump tank and there are a few of these Okinawan spinach branches coming through. But like I said, I'm gonna pull them off later on this afternoon and they can go into dinner tonight. So. What I might do is just work out where they're going and move them where they're easy to harvest. Try and open up this space a bit and work out where I'm going to put some lettuce. So when, when I'm planting out in the grow beds, I like to use just a little bit of stormwater pipe. Just like to use it to dig down, grab the gravel out or the clay in this case. And then what I do is I grab my seedlings and here I'm going to be popping a lettuce just pull my lettuce out of the punnet and then wash the soil off the roots. Gently, of course. Pop them into the stormwater pipe, pull it out. And just lift it up a bit and backfill around it. So I found what that does is it stops, you know, when you're digging all the clay falling back in. So it just makes it a little bit easier. This is a little punnet of mixed lettuce that Bianca picked out the other day. Haven't had the best luck with seed starts this season. Now because this side of the bed here is um, basically on the southern side of the system, north is that way, I'm going to put a couple of tall plants here. So what I thought I'd do is I'd put in some rainbow chard or um, rainbow um, silver beet. I'll probably put two into that area. So there's actually a fair few little seedlings. Um, chards and beets, they normally have a cluster seed. There's a few little seeds in that little pokey, pointy little ball you get. So I'd say what they've done here is popped a couple in because there's a few different colours there. I'll just give them a bit of a rinse out. I'll try and separate them best I can. Might actually uh, move the camera for the next one, hey? And this one can go just here. Don't pop that leaf. And away we go. Now these guys here, I will thin them out. I don't want that many plants in there in one hit, so I'll take a couple out of there. So I've still got a fair bit of real estate up the back there and I might pop some parsley just down here near the edge. Actually, we might put another um, rainbow chard there first and then a parsley next to it, I think. And there we go. That's filled out this little bed a bit more. Pretty happy with that. Now on to the next. So in this bed here, now that I've fixed my audio, um, I'm going to pop out a couple of rainbow chard, one where the turmeric was and one next to it. And that's pretty much where I live for now. You get the idea. Um, so I'll plan out the other beds just over the back there a bit later. So as you can see, the system's chugging along rather nicely. Pretty impressed with the way she's going. I may not have mentioned it before, but those silver perch, some of them are put on a nice bit of size. So definitely over the 500 gram or one pound harvest size. Um, just need to try and fish out the large ones from all the smaller ones. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, beside me here, I'll just quickly mention, I haven't yet posted the chop and flip barrel build, mainly because I haven't had enough time. We've been running mayor around town, um, 
visiting some friends, Deb and Darren, g'day. Um, hope your back's feeling a lot better, Deb, after the operation. So we've basically been a little bit flat out this week. Also too, Bianca's still on long service leave, so trying to enjoy my time with her as much as I can. Just for you folks who haven't subscribed yet, click on that little button up there, check a little box, and you'll be sent an email every time we upload a clip to YouTube. It may be on harvesting the aquaponic ginger here behind me, the turmeric, which I'm gonna post soon, or the little chop and flip aquaponic system. And you can basically come along, suss it out, say good day if you feel like it in the comment section. Uh, but I will pretty much will leave it there. I do hope everyone is well and happy and life is treating you good. I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Bianca was very kind and let me dip into the renovation fund and we got a little SJ sports cam. So finally, we can show you the Jade Perch. Now, these guys here, they're definitely well and truly harvest size. There's only one small one in there. I'd say he's, you know, just part of the... Uh, given genetic abnormalities, you always get a percentage that don't grow as large as the others, so probably wouldn't survive in the wild. So I'm really impressed with the way these guys are going. Um, what we might do is we'll nip on over now and have a look at the silvers. These silvers are looking really good. Uh, I'd say the majority of them, if they're not over the 500 gram or one pound mark that most people harvest them at they're very close very few small ones in there so i'd say we got a fairly decent batch of fish um, we've only had one that we've noticed that is actually a lot smaller than the rest so hopefully these guys will be pulled out soon and split between the two tanks once the jade perch are harvested and we'll get to taste our first silver perch hope you enjoyed the look folks